Mike, Nate, we are back and we are diving into our first rookie mock draft since the college season has started. Some things have changed. We've seen the board move around a little bit compared to what we were seeing coming into the college season. Things are different. We're going to dive on into that. But before we do, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, subscribe, rate, review, wherever you're listening on the podcast, and head over to Discord. Pop in that Discord for a free seven-day trial. Get in there, patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. Link is in all the descriptions of the video, the podcast, wherever you're listening or watching. With all that said, all the promo in the books, Mike, kicking it to you first for the content that people came for. Who did you go with with 101? This is a little different, but are we here for it? That's what we're I here to judge. I think we are. This is the guy that right now in the community is kind of being heralded as the number one wide receiver off the board. And two years ago, you would have said, oh, it's Luther Burden. It's not. It's mm -hmm. Ted McMillan from Arizona. Ted McMillan does something that we love that wide receivers do, guys. This guy piles up yards. And I'll tell you what, he's doing it with Noah Fafita. Am I saying that right, Nate? Yep. That's his quarterback. And this is a guy who is not being heralded, I believe, as an NFL caliber quarterback at all. So a lot of his stuff is coming after the catch. But check this out, everybody. And, you know, we don't always just chase stats, but this is an impressive stat. Against New Mexico on 15 targets, 10 receptions for 304 yards and four touchdowns in week one of the season. Fantastic. There's people comparing him to Mike Evans. If that's the case, sign me up. Ted McMillan, first player off the board. All right. So touching on Ted quick, Mike, I don't hate the pick, and I can't blame you for taking him first off the board. A ton of production to start the year. Uh, one of the big questions, and I'll talk about this with some of my players, the strength of schedule is always my question. When we see these huge pop-off games, you look right now, Arizona has faced the 81st, quote-unquote, strongest schedule so far. And that's always a question mark for me. And I know we had it coming into the season – that he ends up finding himself in a finding himself in a lot of contested catch situations and winning them sometimes yes but finding yourself finding yourself in them sometimes can be concerning you know everybody loved JJR Sega Whiteside and I'm not saying that's going to be Ted McMillan I, I definitely think he's better than that but if you can't always separate and I know we sometimes like to chalk that up to the quarterback hey we just can't always just love all the players but he still has the meat of the schedule to come the rest of the season. I'm going to touch on that with a few of my players as well. Um, these seasons are not over, so that's something to keep in mind. But I think it's a great pick. Nate, feel free to touch on Tet more if you feel the need or touch on your next pick here, which is definitely somebody who's screamed up boards. Real quick, to touch on they play Utah this week, 10th ranked Utah, and they do have Colorado coming up in a few weeks. So, Bob, a great point. See what but happens. Their schedule does get more difficult from here on out. So let's see what he yeah. does. Yeah, still Bob with some uh, Ted slander right there. I don't love it, but um, at the <laughs> it one was mild, it was mild. <laughs> That's good. Um, but at the one hundred two, I'm going to take. I guess is my RB one right now. I guess you know, hard not to have him as the RB one yeah. right now. Ashton Genty, man. I got to talk about Ashton Genty, guys. This guy is currently the RB one in this draft class. Uh, currently second in the entire nation in yards. Uh, with 586. This is coming off a year last year as a sophomore with Boise State where he had 1,344 yards. He's been graded elite by PFF for the past two years. Um, and he's doing this by making people miss, creating yards after contact. And he's only five foot nine, but he does weigh 215 pounds. So I'm not worried about his size there. Uh, it's, it's really not a concern here because he does average 6.32 yards after contact per attempt right now. Last year, averaged 4.52, which is a really, really good number. Um, was also at the top of the nation for missed tackles forced. And he does it through the air as well um, so far this year. Uh, just five receptions for 12 yards. But last year, had 44 receptions for 578 yards. Average over 10 yards per reception at the running back position. This guy is so explosive. He is currently a Heisman contender playing for Boise State. Um, they did lose to Oregon earlier this year, but they played him to the very end. Oregon won on a last-minute field goal. Uh, so as long as Boise State continues to play at their game, Ashton Genty might be a Heisman contender this year. He's going to be one of the top guys there in the rushing uh, production. He's only behind Caleb Johnson right now out of Iowa. Um, and he's also going to be up there with the receiving as well. As we get more throughout the season, they have to use him that way. They haven't really had to use him. He didn't have a reception last week against Portland State. You know, um, They didn't really need him. He still averaged 11 yards per carry, though. Um, so I think – Right now, there's a lot of running backs at the top, so it's really hard to pick one. 
But with Genty's production right now, I have to go with him, number one. I cannot fault you one bit. And I talked about it with you coming into the season. And one of the concerns we had overall with GT was the strength of schedule he was facing. Boise State not known for facing the best teams right now. 32nd hardest strength of schedule. So that's not too bad. That's still good enough for me that I'm not really questioning much at that point. So the previous years will be under some scrutiny. But I mean, overall, what he's put together, what he's putting together now, how I think this season is going to go. I mean, GT is easily up there right now no other back has really done enough to separate themselves either gene has no, done that there's been some disappointments so. too hasn't there yes there definitely has i could say that my guy here at 103 is probably a disappointment because this was the guy that everybody mike you said had kind of chalked up as the 101 i'm going luther burden and you know my first note is this guy's still good right like i didn't miss a memo or anything but i get why gene t and ted are ahead of him maybe a slower start overall to the season than some would have hoped for you know, we were obviously hoping for a big season in the stat column, but that's not really been the case. When you look at the, when you peel back stats, all of his efficiency numbers are still there. His yak wreck, his yards per route run is still there. Excuse me, as I try to find words in my head. Um, so still playing well. The one detractor for people that I know is going to be an issue that he primarily works at a slot. And for fantasy evaluators, a lot of us like to go, oh, he's a slot player, gross. And we forget that a lot of what colleges like to do, they like to set up their best player in the slot because they force the most mismatches that they can create the most opportunities, et cetera. And what I like a lot about this guy, not only is he a good enough route runner for me, eight plus yards after catch per reception, and he gets utilized at all four levels behind the line of scrimmage in the zero to nine yards, 10 to 12 or 10 to 20, then 20 plus he's used all over the place. In that slot, of course, I'm um, not as much outside, but overall, when I'm looking at fantasy expectations, I do think his season is going to turn around another guy who hasn't faced the meat of the schedule yet, but I'm still expecting him to turn into a team's wide receiver one or at worst, a very high end wide receiver two. see guys like Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle guys who have been very productive in that wide receiver two role at worst. And that's with the caveat that comes with that. Maybe he is just a slot at the next level that can still be very okay. He's proven that he can be productive. We'd like to see a little more out of him this year, but I'm still taking him. I'm not letting him slide any further down the board. I'm happy here at 103. I'm I'm getting somebody who I thought I wasn't ever going to have a chance at. I thought he certainly would have been off the board, but I like our first three selections overall. Mike, kicking it back to you. Feel free to touch on Luther, to touch on Gene T, or just touch on your next pick. It's up to you. Balls Before in your court. The show started, Bob and I were talking about just changing our thought process and how everything goes. So I want to challenge everybody out there watching or listening, change your thought process too. When you hear somebody labeled as just a slot, Bob, you made an excellent point. Coaches at the college level and especially in the NFL, they use the slot as a mismatch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's important. If Luther Burden came in, oh, he's only a slot. Well, look, Luther Burden, only a slot, is going up on what would be the third best defensive back against the team in most cases. But back to what matters the most at the 104, I'm snagging the first quarterback off the board, and I'm going with Georgia quarterback Carson Beck. Their last game they played was against Kentucky. Did he look like he should be going in the first round? No. Hats off to Kentucky's defense. They made that game very, very, very interesting. But despite them rattling Carson Beck in the fourth quarter when it mattered the most, he showed why I'm taking him and why he's my number one quarterback overall. Pocket poise, he does not back down. He leads his receivers very well. And most importantly, he takes what a defense will give him and he doesn't try to do too much. So safe floor, but still a high, high ceiling, forgive me, with Carson Beck. He's my quarterback one. We talked about we think this quarterback class is going to be good. It's going to be. It's going to be real interesting, too, to see the way it shakes out because this draft in late September is going to look way different in March or April of next year, and I'm excited about it. And, you know, that's a good pick. Carson Beck, currently my quarterback one as well. Um, I'm a big believer. was my quarterback one coming into the season. Hasn't really done anything to lose that at this point, and no one else has um, overtaken him either. Um, so I like that pick there. Uh, at the 105, I got Quinson Judkins. Um, really excited about him. And honestly, a really good pickup at the 105 because you could argue that he could be the 102. You can argue he's the RB1 in this class. Um, pretty easily, I would say. Currently playing for Ohio State, you know, sharing that backfield with Travion Henderson. Uh, Judkins came from Ole Miss. If you remember his freshman year, uh, he ran for over 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns in the SEC and 
overtook Zach Evans at Ole Miss. Oh, oh friend of the program. The <laughs> uh, so, you know, Judkins has been, you know, a star player ever since he stepped on the football field in college. Um, had a great year last year with Ole Miss and then moved to Ohio State in the transfer portal and has looked really good so far, averaging 9.3 yards per oh. attempt. Um, you know, they haven't played a lot of tough competition yet, so we will see, you know, him up against the other Big Ten teams coming up here soon. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he can do there because, you know, this is a guy that has always kind of like Zach Evans, kind of always had the NFL in mind. Um, I think, you know, Judkins went to Ohio State knowing, you know, going for the national championship, but also, you know, a little bit less wear and tear on his body as well, being able to share that backfield with Henderson and setting him up for success uh, going into the NFL. This guy's powerful, six foot, 220 pounds. He's got the power and he's also a really good receiver. Um, at his time in Ole Miss, he did um, combine his two years for 37 carries, I mean, uh, receptions. Um, so he definitely got a lot of the ball there at Ole Miss through the air as well. So he has that ability. He's not just a power back. Uh, so he's a great all around back. I could see him going in the first round of the actual NFL draft um, come April. So we're going to have to keep our eye on it this year. I think we might see a first round running back between uh, Judkins or Genty. I wish I would have had a chance at 106, but I knew that was being greedy. Um, that was being a little hopeful, but I still think I got a pretty darn good back um, with my pick. Omarion Hampton out of North Carolina. Yeah. Mike, I hope I sniped you. I know you're a, well, you a did. fan. You did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you're a big Omarion Hampton fan, so oh, this yeah. one goes out to you, but he's a bruiser back. He owns that backfield. Um, a lot of times in the last couple of years, we've seen North Carolina kind of split up work a little bit, but it's, it's the Hampton show and everybody else is just, yeah. you know, guest appearances also has 11 targets through four games as of recording and incredible yards per carry after contact 4.64 which is not close to gene t's like six plus that he has but whatever yeah. i guess um we love to see three four is absolutely great across 85 carries you know you see some guys who pop off and have a bunch off of a handful of carries but ultimately great back does not go down easily power back can also catch the ball you love to see all this and he's quick enough too the biggest caveat and this is where i talk crap about a player i drafted but this is about keeping everything kind of in check as opposed to just all these good things all these good things sorry there's some bad things too the biggest caveat Looking back at my production pro profiles from previous seasons is that the ACC is often touted as one of the better conferences that face quote unquote top competition. Currently on the season so far, North Carolina has faced the 83rd quote unquote strongest level of competition out of 134 schools. Not great. So, but again, they haven't faced the meat of their schedule yet. So that's probably going to, they're probably going to bump up a little bit, but you know, this is going to be noted as I go through my production profiles and things like that and something you should consider when drafting players with quote unquote elite production. But this is going to be, in my opinion, one of the more coveted backs in next year's draft. And all these guys we're talking about today are pretty darn good, in my opinion. And the landing spot, Nate, you kind of alluded to it. First round, second round, we're probably going to we are hopefully going to be more spoiled after last year <laughs> um, with sure. how this class goes. However, I feel like the quarterback class. Almost kind of feels a little bit like the Kenny Pickett class, where you know we like a bunch of guys, but and maybe there's one standout, but he's not that great. I don't know. Maybe that's a little outlandish to say. I know there's just a lot of question marks. I know some Give quarterbacks have kind of shown up this year a little bit more than um, they had in previous years, so we're a little more optimistic. But that's my pick at 106. You guys can touch on that, Mike. You can feel free to touch on it. I know he's one of your yeah, go favorite ahead, players. I'm a fan, uh, Omar and Hampton, although they just this past weekend, they got absolutely manhandled by James Madison, 70 to 50. You got to love when a bigger program pays you to come to their house and then you just beat on, up on them like that. I will say one thing I think about this quarterback class, though, Bob, touching back on that, there's a lot more need than the Kenny Pickett class was, where I think Kenny Pickett was the only first-round quarterback. You know, we got the Raiders definitely need a quarterback out there. They got some problems. Who know what Carolina is going to do with Bryce Young? The Browns really need a relevant quarterback that could actually, you know, put something credible together. But Omari and Hampton, this is a guy, look, against North Carolina Central. He averaged 8.4 yards per carry. Oh, that's North Carolina Central. Okay. Well, against Minnesota, good defense, 30 carries, 129 yards, 4.3 yards per carry. That's very respectable. He could do it all. Is he the best receiver? No, he's not, but he's not going to have to be taking off the field on thirds down either. That being said, Nate, you like the transfer up. What about a lateral transfer? Evan Stewart. Is my next pick going from Texas A&M 
to Oregon. So when we started watching Evan or sorry, started scouting players, uh, Nate gave me Evan Stewart to watch. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's check him out, see what he's doing. Super physical at the catch point. I thought his high pointing was great. I love the way he could manipulate defensive backs. And he's doing it pretty well at Oregon, too. I still have some concerns about his ability to consistently separate. So hopefully a full season at Oregon will help him with that. Uh, but this is a guy we've seen the talent from him. He just always hasn't been surrounded by a lot of talent to help him shine out. Going from Texas A&M to Oregon is definitely a step in the right direction. That's a good pick. Um, but I'm going to pick a wide receiver that I think I'd rather have over Evan Stewart. And I snipe Bob here because I know yeah, Bob loves this guy. Bob Bob picked this guy in all of our 2024 mock drafts until he decided to go back to college. Uh, so I knew what I was doing here when I picked him. Um, but I was going with Amika Ibuka out of Ohio State. Uh, the wide receiver is healthy again, and he's put up great numbers for Ohio State. You know, they haven't really played uh, anyone um, of note, but – currently averaging 19 yards per catch, but averaging 14.2 yak wreck. Mike, we love the yak wreck. 14.2 is insane. Um, I do expect that number to come down. But his uh, freshman year, he did average uh, 12.4, and he has averaged over six the last two years. So this is a guy that can definitely create yards after the catch. He's a good route runner. He's got good size, one, 205 pounds. He can really do it all. He's a very pro-ready player. Uh, we did expect him to come out last year, but – he had a lot of injuries last year. Didn't get to play in a lot of games. Um, you know, coming off a sophomore season where he had almost 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns, he was only able to put together 514 yards his junior year. He wanted to come back. There's a lot of those Ohio State players that also came back. They're looking to win a championship. Um, they're still pissed off about Michigan um, losing to them three years in a row and then them winning the national championship last year. So Ohio, Ohio State's got a vendetta. Um, going this year. They're going for the national championship. And Ibuka is one of the veterans there that's really leading that wide receiver room. And Brian Hartline still that wide receivers coach, and he's doing a great job there. You know, they continue to put out great NFL players. I think Amika Ibuka is going to be another one. I don't think, no, I don't really think he's at quite the level of a Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson, but I don't think he's too far behind them either. Um, I could see him being in the first round. I do think he's a bit more limited to the slot at the next level. So that could, um, depending on what NFL teams think of that, that could possibly push him back into, you know, the very early second round. I'm kind of in that like, you know, 30 range. Um, but I do think that Ibuka is a very good wide receiver, ready to go to as soon as he hits the field. And uh, someone that I'd be happy to pick up at the 108. This is just like one of those really solid first round wide receivers that you know you're going to get at the back round of uh, first round. So Amike Ibuka, good pick here and made made Bob have to make some decisions. Yeah, you did. This was this was tough because yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan. I think he's pretty much locked in as the three in this class, the wide receiver three that is. Um, and I think you're probably going to get him at a good value because that that junior season will always be kind of a hiccup for him. Um, and and I'm kind of glad he went back because he had such a good sophomore season, playing alongside other great wide receivers that were also producing. Comes in last year, we were expecting this big blow up year and you know, just gets ravaged with injuries, doesn't really yeah. put a full season together. His production profile otherwise was set to be off the charts. If he can still put in a good year this year, it'll still be very good, but it definitely would have been better with a better year last year. But I am going to be psyched to hopefully draft him earlier than I was able to draft him this one or not even be able to draft him, but you get it. Another player who I think has kind of fallen off. We've seen some uh, rough production or lack thereof just production in general for Ollie Gordon last year's Doke Walker award winner. Um, and my question for this one was, is this guy still any good? And I did see, you know, the first thing that pops into my head, whenever I see down numbers, I want to go check for an injury. There were rumors that he hurt himself in the preseason. Apparently there was this big ACL terror scare hashtag bars, put that on a shirt, but nothing was definitive. Nothing was real definitive. Obviously he's still playing. So he didn't tear his ACL. Um, but what is definitive is his down season, super inefficient compared to 2023 when he won the Doak Walker Award, as I mentioned, for being the best running back in the NCAA. Maybe this supposed injury is the reason for that downturn. We don't know, but he's still dominating the work in the backfield. No sweat there. He's also getting plenty of work through the air, which we love to see, all while facing good competition. 28th strongest strength of schedule so far this season. It's always tough with running backs ultimately, but I certainly see high end potential, but Draft capital is going to play a role. Landing spot is going to play a role. Is he on a good offense? Does he get the draft capital where they're going to be invested in highly early? And if he can bounce back for the rest of the season, 
I think he'll be good to go in the draft capital category, and we'll probably see him go a good bit higher in drafts. All these running backs, I think, you know, especially with how this class has been kind of propped up, maybe propped up for disappointment um, at, at the rate we could be going just because, you know, how dynasty folk are. We love to get super excited and then just have all of our hopes ripped away. But either way, I am in on Ali Gordon, especially at this 109. I feel like I got a value here, especially with what ended up coming off the board, not to slight your picks, but these weren't even guys I was thinking about here. I got who I was also thinking about somewhat at the 112 still. So touch on your last picks, guys. Mike, you're up 110. Um, I do have an update on Ollie Gordon, kind of. This is the closest thing I could find. This is from August 14th, yeah. and I can only get a blurb because I'm not paying a dollar to read the article. Just not. Um, junior running back Ollie Gordon injured his hip flexor. Multiple sources. Mm, multiple okay. Folks 24-7. Also, he did get arrested over the summer for an alleged DUI, too. So there's just mm. a lot of things this offseason that seem to be kind of going against Ali Gordon's favor. So maybe it's not so much here. Maybe it's a little bit up here for Ali Gordon, maybe. too. Those things do factor in. With my last pick of the draft, I'm going back to the quarterback carousel. And look, I can admit when I'm wrong. Because Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers has showed me that I think he has what it takes to lead an NFL franchise. Nate, I did consider your next pick. I'm not going to spoil it here. But what I've seen from Quinn Ewers, Nate and I have talked ad nauseum about this guy in the past. He would leave his receivers hang out to dry. So you want a good workout, you want to get your arms stretched out, go play football with Quinn Ewers. He's going to make you work to get those passes but this year he's more confident in the pocket he's moving around pretty good he does have um i think an abdominal injury or something of that nature right now abdominal so arch manning is getting some playing time looking pretty good too um quinn ewers is the prototypical pro style quarterback he's going to sit back there he's going to hurt you with his brain and his arm not so much his legs he can move around pretty good um his accuracy from what i've seen has improved over the past few years Going Quinn Ewers at the 110. I did see a, a mock, like a full NFL mock, projecting him going to the Raiders. Um, that would be an oh, interesting spot no. for him. No, you don't like that? Unless, unless there's a whole new coaching staff. Mm-hmm. I don't. I want him, and I, I've i been on record saying I like Quinn Ewers a good bit, but it's just been this, you know, you you touch on it with quarterback carousel. It's been such a roller coaster with him. And I feel is. like, I feel like he would be somebody who would be great, like put in one of these Shanahan mock systems that, you know, not necessarily with Kyle Shanahan, but with a McVay, with a someone who's like a mm-hmm. LaFleur, runs that style of offense that spreads okay. the ball around, works off a solid run game. If, if yours goes to a situation like that, but I don't I don't want him going to like a defensive minded head coach with a so so offensive coordinator. No, nah, I want him. I want him to work with a, a Kubiak, for example. Like if Kubiak gets a head coaching job somewhere and he doesn't already have an established quarterback, love that. Uh, Bobby Slowick, uh, Houston Texans offensive coordinator. If he goes into some situation like that, I love it. But I, I'm just I'm I'm going to be very with with quarterbacks. It's a lot about buying the situation they're landing into, sure. um, especially early, and that plays a role in their development. You know, at the end of the day, so. I don't hate the pick here, honestly. I like yours. I like him a good bit. So I like him more than this next pick, Nate. Sorry. But That's Nate, fair. you can talk about your next pick. That's fair. I don't I don't necessarily uh disagree with that, Bob. Actually, I mean I Quinn yours you. as the Matthew Stafford replacement, that would actually be I would love that. Since That'd for a year, that would be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Ooh. Love it. All yeah. about it. Yeah. It fits, it fits very well. Um, I don't know exactly where I'd want this guy to go, but I'm also going quarterback. I'm going Cam Ward. Um, who has been a rising star uh, so far in this season. Currently, probably your Heisman um, favorite, I believe. So Cam Ward came out against Florida. Um, the first game of the season, you know, is built up as this huge game between Miami and Florida. Is Miami back? How is Florida going to look in their third year with uh, Billy Napier? Uh, Miami ended up beating Florida 41-17, to and it wasn't even that close. Uh, Cam Ward looked incredible in that game. Uh, he threw... 26 for 35 for 385 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. And, you know, just controlled the game, controlled the pocket, uh, went into the swamp and did this first game of the year. And this has been a guy that has been really, really productive throughout his career. This is his fifth year in college. He started out at Incarnate Ward, okay, was there for two years. His second year threw for 4,650 yards and 47 touchdowns to only 10 interceptions. 
And after that, was able to transfer up to Washington State, uh, where he played for another two years, uh, was pretty productive in that time, made his transition into the FBS, and then actually flirted with the NFL draft this offseason, if you guys remember. Um, at one point, did put his name in. Uh, then, you know, he kind of heard, you know, he's probably going to be a day two pick at best, probably more so a day three pick, um, you know, just coming from Washington State and having you know the career that he had. And then with NIL in college, he was offered – more money uh, to go back to Miami. So he went back to, uh, back into college, went transferred to Miami, and he has been incredible so far this year. Um, his ability to pass deep has been really, really impressive. On well, throws of 20 yards down the field, uh, he has a 56.5 completion rate, uh, but he has 421 yards and six touchdowns on just 23 attempts. That's uh, really good, and he's graded out as really elite, according to PFF, 11 big-time throws in that. Cam Ward is has that ability to extend the play. He is able to run with the ball. He's able to get the ball down the field and you know scramble plays. Is he going to be able to work within a system and be a bit more consistent with shorter throws? That's what I'm looking to see once we get into uh, more conference games with Miami, uh, if he can be consistent against better defenses. Uh, but right now, this guy is looking like one of the next quarterbacks that has that kind of playmaker ability. Um, the NFL teams are chasing as they're all trying to find the next Mahomes, the next Josh Allen, the next Lamar Jackson, the next it guy. Cam Ward seems to have that it factor at the quarterback position, and teams are really going to value that. Plus the production, if it continues how it started out this year, this guy's going to be a first-round pick and probably going to be a first-round pick in our drafts as well because you know the hype's going to grow. You know, here we are, Mike. You were talking about earlier change. Be willing to change your opinions. I'm I'm opening up to Cam Ward, not necessarily. Not that Nate didn't bring up good points, but one of my biggest issues, fifth-year quarterback, always yep. red flag. Um, anytime you have a lot of players, granted, the one caveat, has decent production throughout his career. It's not like he's been warming a bench for the last four seasons and he's finally getting a shot at Miami. No, he's put up yards everywhere he's gone. He's continuing to do that. Despite being a fifth-year quarterback, he won't even be 23 by the time of the draft. He'll Which be 22 sucks. years old still. He'll be turning uh, 23 in May. So still relatively young, like you said, Mike, kind of crazy for how long he's been in college football yeah. already. Um, so, I mean, that's something to think about when you get these, you know, it, it's, you know, a lot of the reason why we didn't like Penix or Knicks even or had concerns. These guys were 24, going to be 25 this year. Not great. Cam Ward, a little younger. That brain is still a little moldable, um, not as formed as it would be. So. I don't need it. Definitely somebody I'll put more of a watch on than I was probably going to originally. I will wrap up this draft with my final pick, our final pick, only a first round mock. We'll get into more rounds as the draft season kind of comes upon us. Uh, we'll get there soon, but not yet today. And Mike, you didn't even take the best wide receiver from Oregon. You went to the Oregon farm and you decided I'll take the lesser one. I got Tez Johnson and I know you like Tez Johnson too. I know. I think we all like Tez Johnson. Here. I think we're all Tez Johnson fans. Quick twitch, slippery route runner who's great after the catch. What more could you possibly want? Maybe some size. Sorry, you'll have to look elsewhere. He's a little on the skimpier side. But there's plenty of smaller wideouts doing just fine in the league right now. Trust the talent. Trust what we see on film. Don't let the – we in today's NFL, we can't let the size fool us too much. So, And on this team, still the leading target getter despite the quote-unquote big offseason acquisition, Evan Stewart, in my opinion – Ted Johnson's a more technical route runner, and I'm always going to bank on the technical route runners. And honestly, I know I picked him here at the 112. I don't necessarily believe he's a first rounder because of all the running backs, because of all the other wide receivers, because of what can happen with this quarterback class. But with what I've looked into in the class right now, this is what I feel the best with at this moment. And I'll admit, I haven't like I'm not all in on this class yet. I haven't looked at 50 players yet. That's coming. That'll happen. But as of today, I'm happy with Tez Johnson as my final pick, taking Mr. Irrelevant in this first round. I'm a big fan of my Ducky Tez, my Oregon Duckies, yeah. going back to my roots, my Oregon team here, my Oregon fandom. Hey, Bucky, with Bucky looking pretty good. Hey, yeah. I, I did good. I did good. So Oregon's where it's at. I'm just saying. Anything else? He's not looking bad. I'd like to see him throw a touchdown. That'd be pretty yeah, cool. Would be nice. Would be nice. Well, and not many rookies have so far, so. That is true. True. I mean, Jaden Daniels and uh, Caleb Williams both had good weeks. Both had two touchdowns this past week. So that's nice to see. But 
Yeah, Bonex, get yourself on the board. That'd be sick. Any maybe honorable mentions that we didn't touch on that maybe you would have taken with your next pick if you guys want to quickly touch on before we get the heck out of here? Trivia and Henderson is still going to mm-hmm. be in the conversation here. Um, I kind of would have liked to see had Quinchon Judkins not gone to Ohio State. I understand why he did it, uh, but still, he could have stayed at Ole Miss, stayed in the SEC. You're going to be playing against good competition on Saturday nights regardless. Um, I would have loved to see Travion Henderson have the backfield all to himself, but here we are. I was honestly surprised that Travion Henderson was not in this draft. Yeah. Um, I thought about picking him with like my last two picks. He was in consideration, but um, I also understand why he was, and he hasn't really done too much this year. We've already had some question marks about him the past two years. So I get it, but uh, just a couple honorable mentions. I just want to throw out there since we're talking about these guys, and we got a couple extra minutes here. Um, I have the quarterback position. We got to keep our eye on J- Jalen Milrow with Alabama. Yes. Um, he has looked pretty good this year. Um, he looked g- great as a college quarterback last year. Um, didn't really like his NFL prospects off the film last year, but he's definitely uh, developing and he looks better this year. So we're going to keep an eye on him. Um, we also have to keep our eye, of course, on Mike's boy, Drew Alar uh, for Penn State. Sure. Well, after you know, when they get into the meat of their schedule, how does he look against uh, Big Ten competition? And also, uh, Ole Miss, uh, they have Jackson Dart, uh, fifth year starter as well, or maybe not fifth year starter, but fifth year senior uh, starting for them. Um, Let's played see. a lot of games, and Jackson Dart, it's probably going to be a draft riser, I would say. Uh, Cade the, Klubnik. Cade Klubnik. I mean, I would say Clemson has looked better the last two weeks. They looked obviously really bad against Georgia yes. opening week. Um, I think Cade is a great option to come back to college for another year after this year. Sure. Uh, also, Nate, believe it or not, Jackson Dart only in his fourth year. Really? Feels feel like, like he's, he's been around, around a lot longer. Yeah. He played that one year at USC where he wasn't supposed to be the starter, then he started six games, and then he's been at Ole Miss since. Oh, I thought he was at USC for two years, but so did I. Thank you very much. Um, at the running back position, I have to mention, of course, uh, going back to Mike again, they got two running backs, Nick Singleton, uh, Katron Allen, both those guys, uh, you know, could could possibly be day two picks, I think. Um, also got Devin Neal, who we talked about a lot last year out of mm-hmm. Kansas, went back to college. Should have came out. Should have come out. I agree. Uh, Damian Martinez uh, from Miami. He's looked uh, pretty good this year, transferred there from Oregon State. Uh, and, of course, uh, Trevor Etienne with Georgia, Travis Etienne's younger brother, there's some running backs at the wide receiver position. We didn't pick Travis Hunter. What are we doing here? Um, True. I'm excited to see what happens with Travis Hunter. I didn't pick him because there's just so many question marks about right. what position you're going to play at the next level. Um, I think he is going to want to try to do both. I also think if he has to pick one, he should probably pick wide receiver because you're going to make a lot more money. Uh, and it's a little bit easier probably, to be honest. Um, so – I'm going to excited to see that, but if he is going to play a wide receiver, I think he could be a first-round pick. I think he's that good of a wide receiver. Um, I also think Isaiah Bond uh, for Texas could be a guy that uh, rises into the first round. Just need to see a bit more from him. Texas uh, hasn't really used him that much so far this year. Um, Deion Burks for Oklahoma, one of my favorite guys coming into the season, but unfortunately Oklahoma has a quarterback problem, which means Deion Burks is not going to be very productive this year, even though he's a really good wide receiver. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, and there's a lot of wide receivers this year. So, as always, there can be a lot of guys to talk about with uh, day two potential. It would be wrong of us to not at least talk about one tight end. Um, Colston Loveland did not make the first round. Uh, could make first rounds in tight end premium uh, drafts come April, May. But uh, Colston Loveland from Michigan, my tight end one, most people's tight end one, injured right now, uh, but should be coming back soon. Not not Mike's tight end one, though, even though Mike's tight end one has done basically nothing so far. He does have one target on the season. <laughs> Keep Tyler <laughs> Warren's name on your radar, by the way, from Penn State. He's going absolutely nuts out there in Happy Valley because they right now don't have any wide receivers worth a damn. Yeah. So Tyler Warren, Penn State tight end. And Mason Taylor, LSU. Yes. I just want to see how many – of my C to C team guys, you can mention. And he's he's uh, my tight end two. Aren't he's you my so NFL happy? tight end one. But, but aren't you so happy you finally played C to C? It'd be so much better if it was best ball, but other than that, <laughs> you're doing a great job so far. So well, the, the first two weeks were great. The last two weeks have been tough. Yeah. Week three was terrible. Worst bye week layout of all. <laughs> you know? 
It was tough. Uh, yeah, the bye weeks in the beginning of the season are tough. It really is, I know. With all that said, we are going to get the heck out of here. That is it for this first round mock. If you want to talk more rookies from next season, like I said, head on over to that Discord. Get over in that Discord chat for a free week trial. Patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. But otherwise, leave a like on the video. Comment down below. Like, subscribe, rate, review. Whatever you got to do on your podcast player where you're listening in your ear holes. But with all that said, all the promo in the books, we are going to get the heck out of here. We will see you in the next one. But until then, I hope that you all have a good one.